Hi there guys, welcome to Rootstem and welcome to this Arcs of Omen Battle Report. Hello there guys, thank you very much for joining me. If you do enjoy the content, please consider liking, sharing, subscribing and all the good stuff that you can do to content creators here on the YouTubes. In today's game, we've got an Arcs of Omen mission. We're using the Arcs of Omen um, detachment and, uh, and of course, rules for your relics and warlord traits. And we're going to be pitting the Crimson Fists against the Alpha Legion. So we're going to be playing mission 2-1, Strike Force mission. It is going to be a 1,500 point game, so 1,500 points, mainly due to speed. And uh, I quite like 1,500 points. It's not massive, but it's also not small either. Um, we're playing, it's the Abandoned Sanctuaries mission, Strike Force mission. Uh, you get the usual Battleforged CP, so both of us will be getting a CP every player turn. And in this particular mission, we've got five objective markers. As you can see, we've got one down here, one in the center of the board and one straight across, and then two at the flanks. They're gonna be sort of protected by the crates containers. Um, you get four VPs if you control one marker, another four VPs if you control two markers. So four for the one, that'll be 12 if you've got two. And then an additional four VPs if you control more markers than your opponent. You're also in every battle round at the end of the player's turn, not in the command phase, end of the player's turn, you score two VPs if you destroy one enemy unit within six inch of the center, or you capture the marker within six inch of the center, and you score an additional three VPs if you do both. That's gonna be quite nice. Now, we are gonna be having secondary objectives, but my opponent and myself, we're not really bothered about the secondary objectives you get in books codex in the actual game books themselves we much prefer to use the tempest of war secondary objectives and because we can use the whole deck with uh the with all the objectives being in deployment zones and in no man's land so we're going to be using the secondary objectives from a tempest of war game not the ones in the book that's a bit of a, a change for us the mission type also means no man's land so you cannot, in this <laughs> in this game, if a unit has a pre-battle rule that allows it to set up anywhere on the battlefield, that unit cannot be set up in no man's land, which is going to be great. I mean, we've effectively got a 10-inch deployment zone either side. We're not going to be able to set up any additional units up there. Uh, if it has a, move, a rule that allows it to move before the first turn begins, it cannot end that move in no man's land. If any rule is used to redeploy a unit, that rule cannot be used to set up that unit in no man's land. Reinforcement units that are set up on the battlefield during the first battle round cannot be set up after the first battle round, sorry, cannot be set up in no man's land. So effectively you are forced, so there's no reserves in this game, which is a bit of a shame. I did actually want to show these new reserve rules effectively in the Arcs of Omen book because you don't pay for reserves now in this. That would have been nice to showcase, but hey ho, that's by and by. So our little story is going to be, you know, the precinct thirty one has fallen silent. We've got Crimson Fist coming in, and the Alpha Legion are also coming in because they're not the ones that's made it go silent. We might be able to explore that story in a future game. So as is, I want to do. We're going to break down the terrain. Now this is a new battle map for myself. It's from. P, um, P World War Games? No. Um, I'll put a link in below. I actually got it from my friends down at Hobby Workshop. Uh, I think it's from battlemats.eu. Um, it probably is actually battlemats.eu. No, the other one I've got is from P World War Games. This one isn't. It's a double sided mat. The opposite side is a um, wasteland. And this side is a kind of city fight. So I've gone very heavy on the ruins so we've got a ruin a very odd shaped ruin here we've got a square ruin a square ruin we've got another kind of square ruin but that the bottom floor is going to be inaccessible we've got another corner ruin here 
square ruin, square ruin, and of course a square ruin over there. People know what ruins do, it's obscuring, it's going to force uh, players to say plus one to your saving throw, defensible, breachable, all that good stuff. In the middle, we have got two uh, old school Imperial Bastions here. Um, they're going to be blocking line of sight. So we're actually going to class them as obscuring. So if you draw a line of sight over the actual buildings, you're not going to be able to. So we're actually going to class them as obscuring pieces. You are going to be able to scale them. We're going to say it's just a, uh, a move. Uh, we'll count it as a... We'll count it as a, a six inch move up to the actual parapet itself and allow people to go from there across to there. So maybe like four inches and then you can go across. That's not gonna, not gonna be a problem. You've got some barricades here. Now the barricades, we're gonna kind of switch it up a little bit because we're playing in this sort of a city fight. There's not a lot of dense terrain. There's a hell of a lot of light terrain around. There's not a lot of dense terrain. So we're gonna change the rules for barricades for this game. So in barric for us, the barricades are going to have a lot of standard rules, but we're not going to have light. They're going to have dense. So anybody firing over these barricades is going to cause dense terrain to actually affect. So it's going to be a minus one. The craters are still going to be the same. Red craters are crater and containers are containers. They're kind of like blocking line of sight and, uh, you know, scalable and everything else. All good. Uh, so crater there as well. Quite a nice crater. And then... Uh, some more barricades. These are just uh, just obstacles um, that are kind of like a container. You, know, you can you can go over them, but unstable position, and of course they're going to give you light cover benefit. So that's the terrain. It's not too difficult. Uh, we'll go on to the crimson fists. So my crimson fist force in today's game is a little bit more themed than I would normally run. Um, mainly due to the Arcs of Omen detachment rules, meaning that I can actually try and take forces that I've not taken for a long time, especially since the new Codex come out. So, uh, we've got the single HQ compulsory, and then I have chosen three elite choices to be my additional compulsory slots. Um, so we've actually been able to take up to six elite choices in this force, and not having to take lots of troop choices. So it does make it very, very different. So I'm going to just quickly go through the units. If you want a full breakdown, click the link below. Go across to um, rootstem.co.uk. In the actual bunker itself, you'll be able to see the army list. I'll put the army list as a link below as well in the description. So you'll be able to have a look at all the full details. But we have, of course, a captain um, with power saw, bolt storm gauntlet. He's in the... I forgot what the armor's called, but you'll be able to see that on the list. Uh, Primaris, Lieutenant with Storm Shield and uh, Volkite Pistol. And the only troop choice, which actually was a point filler in this game, uh, seven intercessors uh, led by a sergeant with a power fist. And then we've got scouts. I've not seen scouts for a long time. I've not used scouts myself for a very long time. We've got two sniper units. Um, with camo cloaks and we've got uh, with snipers and rocket launchers and we've got one unit with close combat weapons, power fist and of course a heavy bolter. They have received a huge drop in points compared to what they used to be like um, in uh, since the uh, Axe of Omen has come out and of course the data slate, the balanced data slate came out as well. So they going to be quite interesting to use it's going to be quite interesting to use the fact that nobody's got armor contempt as well because that's been dropped completely from both sides uh we've also got two unit well we've got a unit of terminators of course again i've not used terminators for a while they've got a stone bolt uh, with the cyclone terminator missile launch and of course power fist with one chain fist i think chain fists are free now so i regret building them as i did but hey ho and then we've got two units of Stern Guard, who I have made into Mark VI Beakies. And I've made them into Mark VI Beakies because these are veterans of Rin's World. Of course, that's my own little story, uh, but that's how I built these forces. So these are two veteran squad, two Stern Guard veteran, one with two uh, heavy bolters, plus the rest of them. I've got the standard special issue bolter, and then the sergeant, of course, on plain crimson fist. Sergeant has a power fist. And then over this side, we've got a multitude of combi weapons. We've got a melter gun, a combi grav, power fist on the sergeant, of course. We've got a com two combi plasmas and one 
uh, two combi flamers and a combi melter. All the weapon options again for these particular units of fruit. These are dropping uh, in points and these have dropped in points. These bad boys here, Centurion Devastators. Uh, we've got the four heavy bolters, two last cannon and all of them. We've got the rockets in the chest. Um, again, weapon options pretty much free for these guys now. Uh, it's going to be quite interesting to see the fact that if the sergeant's alive, we're going to be able to ignore cover. That's going to be nice. And then Old Faithful, a land raider. This was a uh, actually a charity shop rescue that I managed to get hold of and then of course just built up. Um, it did have some damage to it. I've tried to repair it and build it up as best as I possibly can. There's a bit of a mark on there. What I should have done is take it completely apart, but didn't want to mess around too much. I just thought, right, get it painted, get it sorted, get it painted, get it on the battlefield. And that is 1,500 points of Crimson Fist. It's quite a large force, in my personal opinion, uh, especially with some of the points dropped there. Right, let's see what Chaos are bringing. So this is 1,500 points of Gil's Alpha Legion. Uh, as you can see, we've got an Apostle. I'm just confirming. Uh, a Lord Command, Discordant. Lord Discordant. We've got quite a few, about four squads of infantry running around there. Uh, various different weapons on the actual unit. We've got a unit of bikes with two combi melters, because you can't have a standard melter gun anymore. Two obliterators. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to look forward to meeting those guys, to be honest. A unit of Havocs, two last cannon, two rocket launcher. They're going to probably hurt and wreck my day, especially since I'm now lacking armor of contempt. Some Terminators with options to deep strike, because the rule is for the first turn, not for turn two onwards, which is good. Uh, the Chaos equivalent of a Dreadnought. I still don't like calling them what they are, Forge Fiends. I still prefer Hell to call them Hellbrutes. Hell oh. I prefer to call them a, uh, a Dread. And a standard old school Predator with the Heavy Bolters and the Auto Cannon. The full list, of course, will be on a link below and will be on our website. So if you want to look at all the equipment on there, go over to rootstem.co.uk. So we have deployed the Centurion Devastators down in this particular corner. We've got a unit of scouts ready and waiting. Intercessors looking at holding objective five. Some more scouts in that building there. With the characters underneath, I had to lay one of the characters down because his sword meant that he uh, didn't fit underneath the terrain piece. Scouts need to watch their feet, don't they? They do. He's going to point and he's going to stick it. Don't like it up. And more scouts down here because it's a scout heavy force, is this. Terminators in Land Raider, and of course, both of my Stern Guard veterans are going to be outflanking for free. You don't have to pay the CP anymore. Opposing them, we've got the Hellbrute. Hellbrute. That's the one. Uh, unit of bikers, some more infantry, some more infantry heavy weapons, the Havocs, and of course, the Predator. We've got some more infantry down here. The Lord Discordant is hiding behind that piece of ruin, ready to strike out when he can, and some more infantry rolling forward. I'm not going to. Uh, Enjoy a lot of gills rolling up. He has used his warlord trait already because we rolled for first turn. I've got first turn, uh, and gills done his special abilities to move three of the units. He's tried to move them a little bit further back. He's not put any in reserve to come on later. The units he has in reserve are the terminators and the obliterators, and they're going to be deep striking, so they're going to cause me some pain. But right, I think we should uh, get started with first turn. So the second area objectives that I have drawn from Tempest of War deck is no retreat, no surrender, storm hostile objective and capture enemy outpost. They, apart from maybe the first one, might all get discarded at the end of my turn uh, because I don't think that's going to happen. So the first turn's not very successful. The mission meaning that I can't really move my characters and everyone else up. The Centurion devs haven't really got much of a slide of sight, so they're just trudging forward. There's a lot of line of sight blocking terrain on this. The scouts have opened up. I've managed to do a wound on the uh, Havocs. These lads opened up on the Chaos Marines over there. Focus. There we go. And didn't do anything. The Land Raider, because of its size, can see the Havocs, but it can also see just that squad before it. So rather than having the Havocs take a mass, mass hit, Gillers play a Conceal. Yes. A stratagem for the Alpha Legion, meaning I've got to shoot the... Other squad first, so it's going to be four last cannons, two heavy bolters into that um, Chaos Marine squad. So I'm rolling all the dice together, last cannons are in the white, 
Needing fours because of the Alpha Legion rules and the heavy bolters will gain additional hits on sixes. I didn't get any sixes with the heavy bolters, about right. Statistically average idea. there. Needing threes and twos on the whites. So, these because of the Devastator rule are minus two and then them are minus four. Come on. So three, four, five, you need fours for that. Fours for them. Yep, fucking hell, sixes for them. No. That's Here we go, D6. Yep, and that's all fact, there's no point rolling because Crimson Fists in Devastator, if a weapon is strength seven or more, get a plus one to the damage. So it'll be D6 plus one. So the two last cannons will just, he was a roll of one, they've managed to kill two. So that's that's all I've managed to do this turn. I've not managed to do a lot. Gil's got a, you know, he's, he's been, uh, there's a lot of line of sight blocking. So hopefully we're going to have some good turn threes, I think. Um, morale test on them. Do they need it? Two men down. What's them? Leadership eight. On the dice. Five. Six, seven. Uh, no, I think, I, I even think with uh, Elysia with eight, you wouldn't have even, looking. yeah, not even looking. Right. Chaos turn one. <clears throat> So a little bit of movement from Gil, he's shifted forward, he's ran forward to try and get hold of our objective he needs after the five points. Lord Discordant ran forward as well. In range of Bell Flame, took out two of the scouts. These guys have opened up on the scouts. This squad from down here didn't do anything. We've still got the Predators to go, but the Havocs are now going to open fire at their nemesis, the Land Raider, that just shot at them. He's ignoring cover due to... That priest, yeah, priest giving him a thing. Warp side mm. plea. Warp side plea. And now what he's doing is uh, trying to hit him with some last cannons and rocket launchers. So which is which? I never said. <laughs> One to three, it's the blue for the last cannons. It is the blue for the last cannons. So re-roll the one. So re-roll the one. That's a, and that's a hit. Yeah, so it's all hit. Toughness eight on a land raider. So fours on the reds. Yep. Two. So that will be a minus three and a minus. There was no sixes to hit there. So one of them is going to be a minus three and one of them is going to be a minus two. Minus three will be in white. Uh, needing five, fours and fives. I didn't get any. That's 2d6 damage on the landy. Four, five, six, seven. Tell you what. He's going to command point one of these. That's 10 points of damage on the land raider. Mm. Predator is now opening up on the intercessors across from them. Uh, 2d3 shots from the. Uh, is it not blast, is it? No. So that would be a good five shots from that Predator auto cannon. Um, is that strength 7 minus 2 and 3 damage? Yep. Ooh, minus one. 1. Minus 1, right, okay. Uh, minus 1 to hit. So uh, needing 4s. No. 2 hits. 3 hits. Oh, three hits because of wanton destruction. We do forget about that one. Um, three to one, I'm guessing. I forgot to say it, Paul. <laughs> You've got your normal armor. Minus one. You? I don't get a plus one. For the, remember, the barricades in this are causing dents and not light. So, I saved them all. And then heavy bolters. And then heavy bolters coming in. We've got three hits, no additions. No wounds. And Gilly has already used his reroll this turn. And to finish off the turn, the Chaos Marines in there opened fire into these scouts and didn't do anything. So that is the end of battle round one. That'll be five points apiece. I did forget to show you Gilly's objectives. He had Storm Hostile objective, which is why he did this here. He also had take my objective and my deployment zone, which is now discarded, and the other one. What was it? Grind them down, which has scored no enemy units. So he thought, no, sod it. I'm just going to get rid of that one as well. So, <coughs> five points apiece into battle round two. So, shooting wise, I've had some success. The Centurion Devastator has moved forward, being reinforced now by my Stern Guard. Guild played a stratagem called Scrambler Fields, or Scramblers, meant that I couldn't come within 12 inches of any of these in, in corner. Picks two units, can't deploy within 12. The Centurion Devastators, one could see, managed to slay four of the opposing uh, unit. I'm still in Devastator Doctrine, because according to the thing, you can stay in it now. Uh, down here, these have not fired yet, but they have remained steady. So steady advance for two CP. 
These are open fire at the Lord Discord, nothing. These open fire at the vehicle across, didn't do anything. Uh, the Land Raider though managed to smash away um, some of the remaining guys over there. So I've managed to kill those guys off. So Gil played Conceal again on his Havocs. So they have to be the closest visible enemy unit, which to the Terminators they now are. And of course I've reinforced them with the other oh, units of Stern Guard. I'm playing rapid fire, two CP, so any bolters are going to explode into two additional hits. I'm slowly meandering over to my dice tray. That's all my bolter shots. Because Terminator's count was standing still. Oh, Jesus. That's all shots. Right, I managed to roll for wounding off because there was that many dice. So I've managed to wound him ten times, but he is in cover. He's going to be, there's no minus at the moment, so we're going to be looking at two ups. There's a couple of ones there. That's going to be one there. That one one dead. Done some already. Yeah, so one dies and then the one goes over. And then I've got my rocket launcher needing fours. That'll be two hits. Needing threes because his toughness is five. That's two wounds. That's a minus two normally, minus three because I'm still in Devastator. So he's going to need fives to save. No. Oh, really, yeah, because it's D6 plus one because it's a strength eight weapon and it's I'm a, an imperial, imperial fist. That will be another two down. Ooh. And I've opened fire with those guys into the tank, managed to knock off only two wounds. I've still got two CP left. Gil has run through all of his, he's got zero. I'm going to try and do a charge with the Centurion Devastators into that one guy and the rest I'm going to hold. And the Centurion Devastators, with a reroll, managed to make it in there. They have smushed the guy and managed to storm hostile objective, giving me 10 points plus another two. So that takes me up to 21. Over to uh, Chaos turn two. Ignore the sound of a kettle in the background. Gil has drawn an attempting target. That's going to be objective four, the one in front of the obliterators. Defend stronghold. Hold his objective marker. Um... And that's achieved at the end of the opponent's next turn. I still think he's going to hold that. And investigate sites, which not the greatest, uh, to be honest. You probably might discard that at the end of the turn. And that is the objective that Gilly has to take in this turn. Second. Right, Chaos have moved forward. They've laid down some fire into the scouts, managing to kill one. And have also managed to kill one of the uh, Terminators. Their last remaining Havoc unleashed his last cannon weapon and completely whiffed, missed. So all that death around him, that's uh, scaring him. Uh, everyone else, the Obliterators have come down. The Lord Discordant is shifting over to try and take care of them. And the Terminators have turned up as well. Predators open fire, managed to kill one of the um, Intercessors. I've transhumaned, we're down to one CP apiece. These guys have opened up with their warp salvos. D3 plus three shots. Gilly's got 11 shots incoming. Needing fours though because of the barricade. That hurt. Fours again due to transhuman. Aye. In fact, let me out myself. Yeah. I don't get any extra hits. No. Only two. It's a minus of two though, so I'm on fives. And it's two damage apiece. Another one goes down. Seven. Got oh, five now. Correction, it costs two for transhuman if it's more than five, because there was seven at the starting squad. So I've actually got no CP left. That's left me a bit of a detriment for later on. God damn it. So <laughs> down to five men. Still got the bikers left to shoot. We've got the discordant left to shoot. And these two squads over here. <clears throat> So not, not the greatest shooting phase from Lord Gilly. Um, he had some bad dice rolls, really did. Uh, so these guys have still only lost two. They're still up there. The bikers shooting into them, no effect. Those guys shooting into them. Man only managed to kill two. The Lord Discordant did manage to take one down with a bale flame of all the Centurion devs and then, of course, caused another wound from shooting from various different sources. Um, but it's not looking great. Um, I've lost a total of, what, one, two, three, four, five figures this turn. It's not good. But it is going to be Gil's charge to, uh, phase, and I'm a little scared of that. Right, let's go into the charge phase. So at the end of the combat phase and morale, the Lord Discordant charged in, smashed another one down, got him down to two wounds. 
I've lost quite a few guys down to two left out of the intercessors with the morale and everything else. So I failed the morale check with them guys. One of them ran off. And the Hellbrew absolutely mullered the crap out of um, the scouts. I think he's going down now, isn't he? Uh, probably, but I actually do think as well he might take a lot of, of bringing down. I think he's going to take, absorb a lot of firepower before he actually comes down. And down here, I might have to get my characters involved to try and knock him off. It has ended with turn 21 to 14. Um, so 21 to the Imperium, 14 to Chaos. But depending on how what cards I draw and how I try and come back on this, yeah, we'll see what happens. Right, into turn three. So the missions, my secondary is still overwhelming firepower. I've managed to get one, which is why it's got a little blast on there. I've drawn Assassination. I'm not quite sure how many characters. I think he's got two. Yeah. And I've got Defend Stronghold, which is pretty much a given, I think, in this particular turn. But I need to claim that. That's... Uh, it's the end of the opponent's next turn. So shooting-wise, I managed to get rid of the Hellbrute with all this lot down here. And then the... Lehman Russ, sorry, the, um, yeah, uh, Land Raider managed to finish off the Havoc in the building across. So I've managed to get my overwhelming firepower finally. Everything else just bounced off. I didn't actually get any additional hits there, uh, including some snipers firing up into other guys. It just all failed. So I did kill two units, but nothing else happening at the moment. It's going to be combat, and I think it's going to be a bloody one. So let's get some charges off. So charge is successful here, and charge successful here, but unsuccessful here. These two didn't manage to get into the Chaos Space Marine squad that's opposing them. <coughs> um, so there's nobody near that objective. In fact, I think that objective might actually still be in your hands. Right, let's get some. So using a command reroll down here, Centurion <coughs> Devastator has been killed and uh, one wound and one of the uh, stern guard has been destroyed. Didn't manage to do anything to the Lord Discordant. The bikers have gone. They were absolutely annihilated by both the Lieutenant and the Captain. But it does mean that they are now the closest models to Gilly's line. So he has a good chance of uh, annihilating them, to be honest. Right. Let's go into, Gilly has, he did, apologies for not letting you guys know, but in the beginning of the turn, he moved into the Wanton Slaughter, with the additional hits in close combat, and we've just resolved that close combat, I completely forgot to check for any sixes. It's because we don't, it's a new thing to us, we don't normally do it, that's what it is. Right, into Chaos, turn three. So Gil's drawn no retreat, no surrender, assassination, and he's still got a tempting target. Now, he hasn't, he's only got one CP. He don't want to use it to discard to draw us another mission. So he may just forego no retreat, no surrender completely. Uh, just to try and achieve something completely different. We will see in this game. So in the shooting phase, uh, these guys have lost two. Two to the Terminators. Gil's units fell back, but we didn't move out of the way of the movement phase, as it states in the uh, No Man's Land. Uh, these guys shifted forward and again, still within three, managed to open fire, do enough damage with combination fire of that. And of course, those guys that managed to take out my captain and he failed his resurrection. So he's not coming back. Unfortunately, down here, Gil whiffed completely with his melter guns. He's not had a good day with his dice rolls. Really hasn't had a good day with the dice rolls at all. But we'll see what happens here with the Lord Discordant and the Terminators. And see if we can finish up some more characters. Right. Gills Assault phase. So in the charge phase, they failed to get in. But the Discordant's in. The Obliterators are in. The Apostle, or whatever he is, the Chaplain. He's into those guys. And then these guys are holding. They are holding this objective. Making sure that I don't have it. Yeah, it's going to be probably a bit of... It's very confined and close quarters down there eventually. But it is stopping me from going through. Right then. Discordant first? Yep. Six attacks. Yep. Um, we'll, do, we'll do them. I'll do them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blade of the Limbs first. Blade of the Limbs first gets. Is it six or four attacks on that one? Four attacks. Sorry. <laughs> Two to hit. <laughs> uh, it's strength of six. That's an extra hit. Oh, yeah, it is, yeah. It's an extra hit. So strength of six. Threes to wounds. Oh, five of them. 
Minus two. Minus two. This is not going to look good. This is fives. Oh my god. One dead. One dead. Bleep. Impale chain blade. I'll, uh, sorry, I'm just moving it up to three. So I'll remove these. The impale of chain glaive is going to come in now. It needs twos to hit and twos to wound because he's charged. Five, they're minus three. Did we check to see if there were sixes there? I didn't. So no sixes there, we just checked the video. Minus three on this. I saved one, but I lose another four. Dark Apostle going next. Five attacks, is it, on profile? Yeah. He needs uh, twos. Rerolling re any fails. Good job. And so that one that missed is, then, is actually a hit because of the six. His mace is what? Three to one. Tough strength six. Ooh, and it's a minus one, which I do have to take now. And it's two damage a piece, so yeah. I need. Oh, yeah. Four dice, needing fours. I've done it before. Nope, not this time. Absolutely annihilated. So, definitely, Gil's definitely coming back on this. And the obliterators versus the. Um, by the way, we've already gone with the power fist here because it wasn't going to affect anything else. I did nothing to him. And then, yeah, it's going to be the Obliterators versus the Lieutenant. Right, so, Lieutenant and uh, the Obliterators fighting. I managed to kill one of the Obliterators. They've knocked me down to one wound remaining. So, that Lieutenant struggling on his own in the centre of the board there. Over here, we've got a massive morale. There's a minus nine on this guy. If I roll a one, I stop Gil from getting five points. On a two plus, Gil gets five points. <laughs> That's a three. Take him off, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, cheers, oh, cheers, oh, cheers thanks. Are you happy to the bar, yeah? Uh, so I'll take both of those two off. An extra five points to yourself there, sir. So that would then mean that the turn three ends 37 points to the Imperial <clears throat> to 35 points to the Chaos Marines. It's, ooh, yeah, and uh, in my turn, I'm only going to be earning four points for one objective. This is going to be uh, interesting, I think. Right, turn four. Apologies, I got Defend Stronghold this turn, so I would have gone up to 42. If Gil doesn't fail a morale check in his turn, which I doubt he will, he'll get an extra five at the end of my turn. It's very close. So the missions for me is now Investigate Sites. I'm gonna to have to do an action with that. Oh, great. We've got Blood and Guts, and we've got a Tempting Target, which Gil's decided that Objective 4, the one I have just lost to Gil's Tempting Target, is now a Tempting Target, and I've got to kill stuff in combat. Don't think that's going to be happening. I think I might be discarding some um, objectives. Right, let's crack on. So movement-wise, not a lot of movement. I've shifted some guys around uh, just to try and get some better field of views. These guys have crawled forward. The Terminators have opened fire into the um, group that's actually there. Managed to rinse out four and a half men, down to one left. I'm going to be going with the Stern Guard soon. But this is going to fire everything at your Apostle. <laughs> so it's minus one because of the barricade. So the Heavy Bolt is going to go first. It's going to need fives to try and take out them little two guys. Because they can take the hits before anyone else does. So we've got one hit. That's never great. The toughness is all the same. Uh, it is one wound though, sir. At minus one. So all the models in that squad have got four pin run. Oh, that's off the oh. table. And he saves it. So that'll be four last cannons coming in. I've already used my command point trying to get rid of one of the squads. Four last cannons coming in. That's one hit from a last cannon. God damn it. That's one wound from a last cannon. And that's one save from a last cannon. So the Dark Apostle survived everything. Not a lot left here. The Snipers and the Rocket Lodge are going to try and fire into the Lord Discordant. Snipers first, needing fours because I moved. Two hits. Needing fives, but I'm looking for those sixes. I've got one wound at minus one on the Lord. Needs a three. Bounces off. Rocket Launcher careening in. Hits. <laughs> and wounds. Minus a two. Saved it. 
You saved it, Gil. You saved it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Gil for These guys, the full <laughs> scout squad, are going to fire into that dark apostle, apostle unit. So let's see if I can take some out with sniper rifles first. And then I'm going to hit you with a crack rocket. Snipers. Oh my good God. One hit. No wound. Crack rocket. Because I've declared it. Hits. Wounds. Four up in one. No, so I've managed to kill one of those little uh, apostles or whatever they're called. But look at that, rocket right into his face. That was a bad, bad turn. I killed one squad. Managed to grab an objective, but I've got a funny feeling because it's ongoing combat, that obliterator might obliterate. Mm. So combat-wise, consolidate heroic intervention. He's gone in with the apostle to try and, of course, I've tried to make sure mm. the apostle couldn't buy it. Last cannon him to death and failed. Uh, but Gil's decided to go with the obliterator first. So, how many attacks? Five, is it? Yep. Need him freeze. Oh, some good defense with the sword there. Parrying some hits. Oh, for fuck's sake. Is that your wounding hits? Yeah. <laughs> I've just swore an awful lot, so. I'll <laughs> remember to edit that. Right. Um, hmm. Wait. Right, so I, uh, I survived the obliterator's hit. I'm going to go all in against the obliterator. Needing twos. Needing threes. No, oh. fours. I've got the two. This is a minus of three, so it'll be on his five ups. And it's two damage apiece. Ah! <laughs> Damn it! Five that, attacks. Dark Apostle, sir. Roll Two's. five attacks. Two of the re-rolls, because his, his aura is still in effect. Five hits. Um, freeze to wound, because you miss. Oh, man, that's five. I need five free ups to succeed here. And the Dark Apostle has moved forward towards my lines. This is not looking good for the Space Marines, really. Um, I'll figure out what points I've got. I'll let you know in a moment. And um, we're going to be going on to Chaos Turn 3. End of the movement phase. Gil's become incredibly aggressive. It's skittled over the Lord Discordant. And it's skittled over the actual uh, wrecked container. And he's coming from our remaining scouts. The Terminators have shifted up. They have took hold of the objective forward. I've actually done a run as well for an inch. Well done, lads. <laughs> hard <laughs> they, terrain, hard terrain. The Abutter is trying to hide. These guys are trying to hide. And at the end of the movement phase, they are actually within three. They didn't run. They managed to come down. They're within three. And we're going to claim the action, which we'll do at the end of his turn on of that objective. Deploying the teleporter. No, and it's it raised banners. Deploying teleporter Homer is probably going to be one that Gil gets rid of, maybe. Oh, I don't know. Might do it next turn. Might do it next turn. Uh, right. Shooting. So, shooting wise, the Lord Discordant opened fire, absolutely incinerated four of them, and then the Obliterator and the Predator opened fire on that one lone bloke with his rocket launcher and oh, failed to actually wound him. <laughs> All that firepower, and none of it wounded him. That was quite amusing. Right, in the charge phase, it looks like the Lord Discordant's going to go into those three scouts. So the Lord Discordant is in combat with the poor lads on top. It's his chain glaive going first. Six attacks. Ooh, two misses. Well, he gets a six, so that explodes. So he's got five hits. And these are going to be three to wound with plus one. Yeah. Who's the wound? What's the minus? Minus three on that. They're all dead. They're all dead. And he's tore down the roof of the building. Not really, it's just easier to put him in there by taking that bit away. Right, we've got a morale check to do on the old scout. He's lost four of his buddies. His leadership is seven. Four, five, six. He's all right. He's all right. He does not give a crap. He's going to open some firepower into these two down here. You know he is. Right. <laughs> at the end of turn three, the points are... And at the end of that turn four, it is 62 to 46. We're going to be going into turn five. I have to move into the Assault Doctrine. 
Um, mm. Well, I don't have to actually. I think I can stay in the tactical, which I might do. We'll double check it because I know it's some match play rules now. But I need to try and see what I can do in my turn. If I don't get some good... Go, Gil's managed to get quite a lot of good good hits. He got a full 12 swing. He's managed to really bring it round. Right. It's going to turn four. So after a quick look, after I did my movement, I can't really move into positions to try and get my objectives. I would end this particular turn maybe on 55. Uh, nowhere near the 64, and all Gil would need to do is sit still and not dwell and still win the game. So that will be it. Right, thank you very much for joining us, guys. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the battle report. I especially hope you enjoyed the battle report, and make sure you don't skip press skip on any of those adverts that appeared, uh, just to give me some <laughs> some nice revenue. Um, <clears throat> uh, hopefully more battle reports come in, but hey, hit and miss whether or not I can actually get them properly recorded. Well, thank you very much for watching, guys. Please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification button if you do enjoy it and you want to see more, and we'll see you next time.